Hey everyone, Kelly here. May is over and done with, so we need to do a wrap up video. Before I get started, I wanna remind everyone to please like and subscribe below if you like the videos I bring you, and let's get started. All right, I feel like this video is going to be a little bit long, so I'll try to hurry through well, I don't want to hurry through, but I'll try to get through as many books as I can in this video. So last month was pretty good for me. I read seven books. Not bad. Definitely had a few moments where I didn't know if I was going to finish them in time, but it worked out. And I even read a bunch of my books that I listed on my TBR in my last monthly wrap-up TBR video. So cool. Great for me. <laughs> progress. Two of the books I read last month I'm not going to go into super detail on because I've already talked about them extensively in another video which I will link, but I finally finished the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. So I finished the second book, Ruin and Rising, and then I finished the third one, Siege and Storm. I gave Ruin and Rising... Kelly, why do you keep uh, mixing up the order of the books? <laughs> Nope. Okay. The second book is called Siege and Storm, and the third book is called Ruin and Rising. I gave the second book Siege and Storm. I have to keep repeating it or else I'm never going to remember it. Kelly, why? I remember all the Harry Potter books. Like, why? Anyways, I gave four stars to Siege and Storm. It took me a while to finish, and I just think it's because of life got in the way. But it wrapped up really nicely and it set us up perfectly for the last installment of the trilogy, which is Ruin and Rising. <laughs> and I gave that four and a half out of five. This book was so fast paced. Oh, I really liked it. It was definitely my favorite of the trilogy. I don't know if I like it more than Six of Crows, but I did really enjoy the last book. So highly recommend. I'll link the video below or on top in the cards if you want to see my review on the whole trilogy. Loved it. The next book I read is actually a play and I read The Mouse Trap by Agatha Christie. I read this a long time ago but I had to reread it because my theater company Spearhead Theater is producing it. So super excited, rehearsals are underway, hopefully COVID cooperates because it's an outdoor production but yeah this is a murder mystery and <laughs> I wouldn't go as far to say that it's a farce but it's really, really humorous. It pokes fun at itself and the genre. And I mean, it's written by a master of the genre, Agatha Christie. So super fun, four to five, would recommend. Moving right along into the next book that I finished this month. I totally forgot, I already did a video reviewing this book. So <laughs> wow, good for you, Kelly. <laughs> that would be Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Super cute. I thought it was lots of fun. I gave this one a four out of five and it was just ugh, so sweet. I really loved the male protagonist, Zephyr. I thought he was just, I want to say he was a cinnamon roll, but I don't even, well, I guess, yeah, I guess he would be a cinnamon roll kind of character, I think. <laughs> help me out. I think he is. But he was just so sweet and so refreshing. And I really enjoyed Danny's confidence and power as well. So if you want more info on that, I will link my review video here. But I really enjoyed this one. I cannot wait to read the third one, the third and last Brown Sister book in the trilogy. Yeah. The next book I read was actually for the podcast, Bring Your Own Book. And that was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I gave this book a three and a half out of five. And I was kind of not sure if I wanted to do a three and a half or a four, but in the end, I decided three and a half was really where I was sitting at. I really enjoyed this book. And I mean, I don't read a lot of horror, so <laughs> whoa. But I really liked the, the uneasiness of it all, if that makes sense. I was on edge for a lot of this book because I will say the first half is quite slow and we're building to a huge series of twists and turns in the last half of the book, specifically the last quarter of the book, I would say. You get a lot of reveals in the last 50, 60 pages or so. And wow, I I don't know if this is a new author, if this was her debut work, I'm not sure, but I really liked it. And I would like to see more of her work to see, is this her normal style? like 
what's she about? I want to know what you're about, Sylvia. But I really enjoyed it. It was creepy. So creepy. Um, <laughs> lots of body horror, um, which I think I'm okay to read it. I would not want to see this as a movie just personally because I'm a chicken. But I think the story would lend well to a visual adaptation like a TV show or a movie. And I think as we discussed on the podcast, I do believe that they're in talks with her to create an adaptation for TV, I think. So that's pretty cool. We follow our character, Noemi. Noemi? Noemi. My parents are like, Ugh. my parents are fluent in Spanish. I'm not, so. We follow Noemi as she goes to visit her cousin Catalina in El Triunfo, which is in the Mexican countryside. I really enjoyed the atmosphere of this book, whether it was the village that she was visiting, whether it was High Place, the haunted-ish mansion that she visits. This is definitely like a haunted house sort of story, but huge twists that I did not see coming. Wow. And I mean, I don't read a lot of horror, so I don't know if it's just me not spending a lot of time in this genre, but I thought it was quite clever quite interesting. I definitely have a friend in mind who I want to recommend this book to because I think they would really love it. And yeah, so she goes to visit her cousin Catalina because Catalina sent Noemi's father and he was also Catalina's guardian. She sent him a really, really bizarre letter and people don't know how she's doing. They're worried about her health and her mental state. So Noemi goes to visit and to see what's going on and Catalina is newly married to an Englishman named Virgil. <gasps> I hate that name. If there's any Virgils watching, I doubt you are because I feel like we're not the same demographic here. I feel like you're not interested in what I'm interested in. I don't know you, Virgil. I'm sure you're lovely, but I don't like that name. So she goes to visit her because Virgil's new and he's a little suspicious. So that's all I'm going to say about him. But it was really interesting. A lot of moments had me like kind of like almost clutching the pearls, but not quite because they were just so awful, these people. Oh my God. But Trigger warnings, please look the book up. I don't want to give anything away, but there's definitely some talks of racism. There's body horror, there's sexual assault, very dark imagery. I really enjoyed the book though, but take care of yourself. The second last book I got to this month was actually a novella and I read it on my Kobo and I got it on sale, I think like a month or two ago, but just didn't have time to read it yet. And I'm so glad I finally got to it. This would be Ring Shout by P. J. Lee Clark. Oh my God, I loved this. This is a sci-fi horror fantasy novella about a group of young women in Georgia in the 1920s who are going to fight Ku Kluxes, who are these monsters that, you know, going by the name, they take the shape of clansmen that clan. I don't think I need to explain further. But these women have a special gift where they see the Ku Kluxes beneath the outfit and they go and hunt them down. It is super fast paced. This is an extremely short read. It's a novella and everything was so developed and I was constantly on the end of my seat like what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? The main character is Maurice and she is so freaking cool. She's got this really cool blade that has, I'm actually just gonna read you a little quote here because I don't know how to explain this sword properly because he just does it so well. So why would I butcher it? Okay, <laughs> let me use his own words. Auntie Ondine told me how the sword came to be. The one who made it back in Africa, he was a big to-do who sold slaves till he got tricked and sold too got made a blacksmith on account he was good with iron. He made the sword to look like one that used to mark him as a big to-do, only bigger, not just for ceremony. He pounded it with magic, calling on the dead who got sold away. He bid them sing their songs, seek the spirits of the ones who sent them across the sea and bind those chiefs and kings, even his own self, up in that iron, make them serve those they done wrong. When I call the sword, I get visions from them angry slaves, their songs pulling at restless chiefs and kings bound to the blade, making them cry out until sleeping gods stir in answer. That's the sword's power, a thing of vengeance and repentance. 
Don't know how it ended up with these three, her aunts, her aunties, but they say it needs a champion. When it first came, I wasn't no champion though, just a scared girl hiding under the floorboards. But I learned how to listen since then, how to move to its rhythm. Oh, it's so good. There's so many, I don't even, oh. It's a novella, okay? But there's just so much to look at. And I finished it and I gave it a five out of five. It's not, it's not surprising uh, with the way I'm going on about it, I think. But I really, really think that high school should be reading this instead of other options for classics or to learn about racism. Because even though this is a sci-fi book, he does a really, really cool job at taking factual historical events and atrocities and weaving it with this sci-fi tale. So myself, I mean, I need to research some of the things he talks about because there were moments where I wasn't sure what was reality and what was fiction. He blurred that line so well that because I did not learn about these things growing up, I need to do the extra research and I am on board to do that research. I can't recommend this novella enough. I love it. I love it. I have never read any of his other works, but I am definitely going to. So five to five, please read Ring Shout. Oh my God. The last book I read, I actually didn't technically read. I listened to as an audiobook, And that would be, I need to look at my journal because the title is very long, but that would be What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience and Healing by Bruce D. Perry and Oprah Winfrey. This was a really interesting nonfiction read and I, most of the time, if I'm doing nonfiction, I like to listen to it. I do read it sometimes, but especially with this sort of book, there was a lot of conversations being had and they would even play clips of the Oprah show. The Oprah show, <laughs> the Oprah Winfrey show. We all know what show I'm talking about, okay? They played old clips of interviews on her show to back up things they were talking about in the book. And it was so interesting. Huge content warnings because this is dealing solely on trauma. So we're talking the whole gamut, addiction, sexual assault, physical assault, isolation, poverty, systemic racism. It goes on and on. PTSD from, you know, all sorts of different traumatic events. It was really informative though. So I do think if you're ready to tackle some of your trauma or even if you just want to learn about trauma and how the brain works because this is a very scientific book about the brain and how the brain functions i would really recommend this book if you're ready to learn about it if you're not don't pick it up and that's okay you know go at your own speed as an actor i'm constantly trying to figure out how people work and i mean it was great from that perspective but it's also just great as an individual to read this and go, oh, this makes sense, you know? So yeah, I loved it. I gave it a four out of five just because there were some sections I'm gonna have to re-listen to because it is a lot to take in. There's a lot of info, but I really enjoyed it. If you get the audiobook, they give you a couple PDFs with it to refer back to certain diagrams and concepts he's talking about. I'm definitely going to need to look at those again because wow, a lot of info but I really enjoyed it. So overall, I had a really good reading month, actually. I had a bunch of fours, four and a halves. I had a five. Not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. <laughs> I just scared the cat doing that. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, now we're getting into my TBR for June. I have high hopes for myself. Is it gonna happen? I don't know. Am I gonna get through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? potentially eight because I have another one I'm looking at. I don't know. Am I going to get through them? I don't know. We'll see. But <laughs> I have high hopes. So I have so many books that I want to read and you'd think with the summer approaching I'd be less busy but with my work schedule summer is usually the busiest time for actors. Summer and if you get into a Christmas show Christmas time is like you know a good time but also busy. <laughs> so I'm getting further into rehearsals right now. I'm getting a little bit busier, which is why I'm only doing two videos a week right now, but I do want to keep reading. So I'll make it work. Hopefully everyone has to like sleep, right? So I can at least read before bed, hopefully. Oh God. Okay. 
The first book I want to read this month, I've actually already started because it's for our podcast. It's actually the last book for season one of Bring Your Own Book, and that would be RF Kuang's The Poppy War. I've been wanting to read this for a long time because I just keep hearing so many good things about it. And look at this beautiful cover, okay? Covering the girl, of course. I believe this is Rin. I believe that's the main character, Rin. But this book sounds so good. It is a dark fantasy historical fiction of sorts following Rin. And I just started it, so I don't know much about it. And I want to keep it that way because I want to be surprised. My friend Tilly, who's also on the podcast with us, she did say it starts off like, you know, kind of cool. Rin just got into this very, very important, prestigious military academy, Sign Guard. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Sign Guard. And she's just started there. But Tilly told me that it starts off kind of like, oh, cool. She's in this new school, blah, blah, blah. And then shit hits the fan and it gets pretty dark and pretty bloody. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a little scared, but scared in a good way, I think, because I really, really, I've been so interested in this book, so I really hope I like it. But I don't want to go too much into detail in the synopsis because I want to be surprised. So I'll just say, Rin takes this exam and she gets into the biggest, most prestigious military academy, Sign Guard, and she is a darker skinned peasant girl from the South which everyone else at the school are northerners, they're very fair-skinned. It's icky. They don't treat her very well. So it says here, fighting the prejudice of rival classmates, Rin discovers that she possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism. <sighs> oh my god, oh my god, I'm so excited. Exploring her gift with the help of a seemingly insane teacher, Rin learns that gods long thought dead are very much alive, and that mastering these powers could mean more than just surviving school. For while the Empire is at peace, the Federation of Mugen still lurks across a narrow sea. The Federation occupied Nikon for decades after the First Poppy War, and only barely lost the continent in the Second. And while most people calmly go about their lives, a few are aware that a third poppy war is just a spark away. <gasps> oh my god, I am so excited. I'm only on chapter four, and I'm loving it so far. So I think I'll probably do a review on this because why not? We'll see. This next book is a speculative YA thriller, and I came across it just browsing, just browsing window shopping. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do another book haul video. I know, but does it count if you get a gift card? It was a gift, okay? So like, I didn't pay for it. Guilt-free, okay? Anyways, <laughs> this is a new book I just bought and it's called The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. And this sounded really interesting. So let me just read you the back quickly. No one speaks of the grace year, it's forbidden. In Garner County, girls are banished for their 16th year to release their magic into the wild so they can return purified and ready for marriage. But not all of them will make it home alive. Tierney James dreams of a better life, but as her own grace year draws near, she quickly realizes that there's more to fear about the grace year than the brutal elements and the poachers in the woods. Their greatest threat may very well be each other. I just love it. I... <laughs> I have high hopes for this. I think it sounds really awesome. I'm getting some like dystopian, witchy feminism kind of vibes here and I'm digging it. And look at this beautiful cover, okay? That is just stunning. Honestly, I would put this up as a print on my wall. So, hey, if you know of any out there, hook a girl up, okay? And it says at the bottom, the tagline says, survive together or die alone. Love it. The next book, I think I've already talked about because I mentioned it in a book haul video, I believe, so I won't go too much into detail. There is remnants of an ugly little sticker, so forgive me, forgive my sins. Um, this is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Again, beautiful cover. This is a historical fiction book. We all know how I feel about historical fiction. <laughs> But it just sounded so good. So I really hope she doesn't let me down. And also my mom bought this book of her own accord or on her own accord, whatever. She bought this book herself without me telling her to buy it. And we're gonna read it together. So I think that'll be fun. So yay, can't wait.
The next book I'm hoping to read this month I have also already talked about, so I won't go into too much detail, but this would be Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. Look at this creepy cover. Oh my god. But this is a thriller about a young girl who was imprisoned for killing a baby, allegedly. This is definitely going to touch on a lot of uncomfortable subjects, but I'm excited, so bring it on. Just quickly, it says, Mary B. Addison killed a baby, allegedly. She didn't say much in that first interview with detectives and the media filled in the only blanks that mattered. A white baby had died while under the care of a church going black woman and her nine year old daughter. The public convicted Mary and the jury made it official, but did she do it? She wouldn't say. The book follows Mary after she gets out of prison. She's been in jail for six years. She has this guy Ted in her life and their unborn child and the state's threatening to take her baby. And, and it just seems like it's gonna be a wild, wild ride. And the very back of the book says, ends with a knife twist that will send readers racing back to the beginning again. <sighs> I can't wait. The next four books are all romance of different genres, but they're all romance books still, because I need to balance some of these longer, heavier books with some light, fun stories. So the first book is the last book in the Brown Sisters trilogy, Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I have also already talked about this one, but this one's following the youngest Brown sister, Eve, as she <laughs> finds her way to a B&B &B and gets hired on as chef, even though she is not really qualified for the job from what I gather. And I think this is like a hate to love romance, which I love. Well, yeah, in real life, I, no, in real life, I would be like, wow, this freaking idiot, the guy, not the girl. <laughs> but I love reading them for whatever reason, so. I can't wait to read this. I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I loved the first two, so I cannot wait. I just, I don't know if summer has truly begun until I get into more of this type of story. So I can't wait. Then I have The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. I loved the first book, The Roommates, and I can't wait to get into this one. This one, I have heard though, that it's not quite as steamy as the first book in the series. <sighs> That's okay. But I am kind of expecting it to be steamy. So Rosie, what's going on? Let me know. I mean, she's not watching, but is it steamy? I hope so. Um, <laughs> but it's about a woman named Naomi who she is an adult entertainer and she is now working in education, but she's having trouble because of her ties to the adult entertainment industry. So we have this young, probably hot, I mean, I'm not really into this picture of him, but I'm sure, whatever, this young hip rabbi who wants to teach people about sexual health and education, and he wants to bring more people to their temple. So he contacts Naomi and they start working together and I'm sure sparks fly and I can't wait. It sounds cute anyways, I can't wait. It says, Dannon's voice is sparkling, witty and direct. Thanks Entertainment Weekly. And also a stunning subversive romance that made me proud to be Jewish. Oh my God, that's so, that's so sweet. That's from Rachel Lynn Solomon, author of the X Talk, which I also have, but have not read yet. And I can't wait to read that. So, oh, but I think I have high hopes for this. So I really hope that I love it. Coming up on the end here, I have a completely new book that is from the latest sort of book haul I did that was from a gift card. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for the gift card. So I just found this while I was, you know, trying to find new books. And the front has a quote from Jennifer L. Armentrout. And I love her book. So I thought, okay, this should probably be good for me. And this is Roar by Cora Carmack. I had never heard of this book. I believe it's a trilogy. And I bought the first two. <laughs> because I have a feeling I'm gonna really, really like it. So this is a fantasy romance and I like the cover. She's giving me like Daenerys vibes or something. It, I don't know, it sounds really good. So let me just read you the back. Challenge a tempest, survive it, and you become its master. 
Legend says that Aurora Pavan's ancestors first gained their magic by facing a storm and stealing part of its essence. Aurora has been groomed to be the perfect queen, but she's yet to show any trace of the magic she'll need to protect her people. To keep her secret and save her crown, she'll have to marry a dark and brooding stormling prince from another kingdom. Oh no! <laughs> like, what am I to do? I have to marry a dark and brooding prince? <laughs> Stop the presses. Anyways, okay. <laughs> She'll have to marry a dark and brooding stormling prince from another kingdom. He'll guarantee her spot as the next queen and be the champion her people need to remain safe. But the more Aurora uncovers about him, the more a future with him frightens her. Ah, oh, no! <laughs> when a handsome young storm hunter... Oh, okay, here we go. When a handsome young storm hunter reveals he was born without magic but possesses it now, Aurora realizes there's a third option for her future besides ruin or marriage. She might not have magic now, but she can steal it if she's brave enough. I just think it's going to be great. I'm sorry. I <laughs> expect a review of this because I have a feeling I'm going to really, really love it. I'm going to have a new obsession. So... Please, please, Cora, don't let me down, please. The very last book I hope to read this month is a romance book called Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. I found this book through Jess Owen's booktube channel and bookstagram account, and it sounded like a lot of fun and really sweet, and I just think it's gonna be perfect for summer, so. There's a very small amount of reviews of this book on Goodreads, but they're pretty positive, so hopefully this book gets more exposure Hopefully I like it. I'm, I'm sure I will. Like the cover looks so cute. I'm looking at my Kobo here because I bought it as an ebook because I couldn't get it as a physical copy here. Strangely enough, I'm sure if I looked around like to an American store or maybe a British store, I could maybe get it, but it's usually a bit pricier. So I thought I'll get the ebook and then if I really, really love it, I'll get the physical copy too. So let me quickly read you the synopsis. It looks like it's gonna be really sweet, no pun intended, but I think I'm gonna probably really like this. After a public meltdown over her breakup from her cheating musician boyfriend, Cherie swore off guys in the music industry and dating in general for a while, preferring to focus on growing her pastry chef business. When Charisse's younger sister reveals she's getting married in a few months, Charisse hopes that will distract her mother enough to quit harassing her about finding a guy, settling down and having kids. But her mother's matchmaking keeps intensifying. Charisse tries to humor her mother, hoping if she feigns interest in the eligible bachelor she keeps tossing her way, she'll be off the hook. But things don't go quite as planned. Turns out for the first time in ages, she and Kieran King, the most annoying man ever, are on the island at the same time. Avoiding him is impossible, especially when Kieran's close friend is the one marrying her sister, and he's the best man to her maid of honor. Of course. Kieran doesn't know what to make of Charisse now. They've always butted heads. To him, she's always been a stuck-up brat who seeks attention, even while he secretly harbored a crush on her. Now with Charisse's sister marrying one of his good friends, he can't escape her as the wedding activities keep throwing them together. When things turn heated after a rainy night of bedroom fun, Okay. <laughs> they both have to figure out if they can survive the countdown to wedding day without this turning into a recipe for disaster. <sighs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure I'm going to breeze through it. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I think it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to read hopefully all these books and the one on here. Oh my gosh. And I for some, well, I know why I got into this mood, but I am lately wanting to read a lot of Neil Gaiman books, so I don't know how many books I'm going to be able to read right now in this month, but I also have some holds for the library of Neil Gaiman books, so I'm hoping to get those in and get started on those. I just started watching Lucifer on Netflix, and I had no idea that that was based off of Neil Gaiman's Sandman. <sighs> like, what the heck? I have... <laughs> One of my sisters is like, extremely obsessed with Neil Gaiman and she had his books all of his books growing up and I always saw the covers and I saw the Sandman covers and thought like oh my god like those look like horror books I don't know if I could read those but I mean I was quite young there is a bit of an age gap between us so I thought that's too scary for me you know but I didn't know that Lucifer was a Neil Gaiman character so wow I can't wait to get into it <laughs> 
sounds like something right up my alley. So yeah, I'm hoping to start reading those this month maybe. And we'll see. That's all I have for you today. I have a lot of books to read. We'll see how it goes. But have you read any of the books on my list for this month? If you have, let me know what you thought because I am dying to find out what happens in these books, especially the Poppy War. Like, <laughs> can't wait to find out how things... Oh god, I'm just, I'm scared for everyone. I'm scared for everyone in that book. I'm like, what's going to happen? But anyways, no spoilers, please. But if you have read them, let me know what you thought. I hope you're having a great day. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye.